Vivid Pick Japan. Yeah. Interesting choice. Maybe... I thought he was going to do our uh, spicy <laughs> China build. Maybe he's saving it. Maybe. Maybe he's like... Oh, I know what he's doing. I know what map he's saving China for. Never mind. Because <laughs> he wants to select the map, probably. Yeah. I think he's got a specific one in mind. What's up, Forever and Beyond? Welcome to the stream. I think we're good to go. All right. Let's uh, see if either of these players remember that there's cows on the little islands. Yeah, I like the I like the tiny little islands there. They got a couple cows, which is great for Japan because they can throw a couple shrines on there without mm. even having to bring the cows back. Yeah. I've never actually uh, cast over this map before, but exciting. Oh. I actually think this is one of the best maps for Japan. It's easy to wall, and it's easy to get a shrine boom going. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say, it might it'd probably be very good for a uh, shrine boom, because you can grab these hunts pretty easily, because they're so far away with the uh, shrines. Oh, I like the lighting. Yeah. Yeah, the lighting on this one is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the ESOC maps are just so much better. Yeah, it's good stuff. All right, how do I do this again? How do I fix the UI? Do you remember? Yeah, I don't have the UI installed right now. Oh, it's okay. So I won't be able to see shipments. I, uh, I'm i going to install that between uh, next map. It's all good. There's a certain, I think it's, oh, it's, oh, it's Control X. The, uh... Control Shift X. There's something... I don't remember what it is. A little weird on this map. Oh, Control Shift uh, F. That's for uh, that's for uh, whoa, uh, the fog of war. There's the option... there's something where I can type in the command. Oh, Control Shift C. Ah, uh, there we go. If you go um, yeah. lighting set twelve, it makes it really nice. But I think this one's already default to lighting set twelve. Perfect. There we go. Okay. Good stuff. I love this map. It has the lizards in the middle. Mm. Dude, those are hard for me to see. <laughs> they're yeah. so they're uh, so you, tiny. And going for a trade route start. You don't normally see that. And he's going to get this first pass of XP. With Japan, I like it. Two explorers going to help him out a lot there getting that up. Yeah, I see he's scouting with his orchard rickshaw and found two stray sheep. That's a nice find for his first shrine, too. FPS is at uh, 30 yeah. because garbage internet. That's why. <laughs> Someone, Someone's like, so, sorry, go ahead. What can, what can Japan do off of a trade post start? Because um, normally I would, they go with the uh, consulate. Yeah, I would probably go for an extra shipment of wood and get a few more shrines out. I think we're going to see a rush. I mean, that could be good too. He could, if he depends on what he wants to do. If he wants to build a council a little bit later, um, he could do that. Let's see. Has he sent anything? No, he hasn't sent anything yet. I wonder what he's going to send first. Because I don't have the shipment sent on my UI, so I'm having to watch yeah. the TC. Yeah. No, it's like, I'll, I can let you know. So, me and Vivid have actually been working on a rush for Japan, and I think he's actually attempting it right now, live on stream. I like it. Yeah, that trade post start is uh, part of the build. So this will be interesting. There is a treasure contention going on. Oh, neither of them want to take it. <laughs> That's hilarious. He's going to go for it. Oh, oh and India is going to grab it. Oh, that's unfortunate. Good grab for Poxic, though. It's going to help him age up a okay. lot quicker there. 300 wood on the floor, though. For, uh, yeah, Japan. that's what I thought he was gonna play. So now he, if I don't know how much time he has, if he can build the council in time to get the cheap age up. Um, I think he's just gonna build shrines because he's uh, only got one up right now. Yeah. He was lucky; it was a wood start, which meant that he could actually get away with that with only chopping twenty-five wood. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we see a agri fort going forward right now. I love it. 
four villies on it. I love it. <laughs> Ooh, that's a ten ten coming up. I right l- now. I love it, dude. I'd love to see Ashi versus Sepoy. Oh, this that's a the the Sepoy actually win in that. Yeah, they got the extra. Ishi. Yeah, the thing with that Ashi yeah, though is that Ashi do have speed, so. Yeah, they can kite pretty well, but they don't have any range advantage. Yeah. And India gets uh, skirmishers as well. Yeah. Gurkha. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what's Japan going to do? He has not even started aging yet, and there's an agar fort halfway across the map. Um, he's sent in uh, Good Faith, and uh, India's first card was uh, Distributivism. Oh, pretty standard. Yeah. Do you want to look at the uh, decks real quick? I can't. Okay. Or maybe I can't. Yeah, you can. If you click see. on Menu and then click on their flag. Okay. So we have a water deck from India. He's got uh, Rendering Plant. He's got East Indiaman. He also has uh, Duck of Suffering, which is very unusual. I've never actually seen that card played, ever. And yeah. uh, Japan's aging with the Tory Gates. Yep. Mm-hmm. So he's going to get the... Not the... Uh... He's going to get that uh, yeah, wants... military rickshaw. Yeah, and the XP boost, too, which uh, boosts his uh, trade post. And uh, it boosts the XP you get from building shrines, too. So oh, does that's it? That's very significant, yeah. Did not know that. And building a consulate as well simultaneously. I like it. My initial yeah, thought is... Gathered... My, sorry, my initial thought is that he's going to do uh, expos from Portugal and then go with musk and kind of have those bows complement the musk. He hasn't gathered any coin. He's gonna go for uh, he's gonna go for the Spanish consulate. Watch this. Ooh, ooh! I don't even know. I don't even know. I couldn't even tell you what Spain has. Do they have rods. Spain provides an XP trickle. Oh, and combined with the Tory gates and a trading post, that's gonna be about five XP a second. Wow. He's gonna be raking in shipments like crazy. Let's let's check his deck out real quick. Uh, it's probably gonna send. The 300 export first would be mm-hmm. my guess. I like the... Uh, uh, or the Daimyo. Yeah, I like the 11 Daimyo Sohi. I love that card. Yeah, it, it's nice for, for him to get a little bit more siege there. Um, yeah, because Ashley are, are pretty low siege for a musk for what they cost. Yeah, and they're essentially pikes, aren't they? The Sohi? Yeah, he's gone Sp- Spanish uh, consulate here, officially. And then first card for India is five sepoys already going for the trade post. Uh, classic 12 sepoy. So let's see if he can get out that on time. Cows were actually shipped over to the mainland. So he didn't ship an explorer over, he shipped the cows over. Oh, he might, maybe he put the explorer over initially. Yeah, he's got yeah. The, cow, the ship there. So. And Ashi are Which coming out. India has not even touched his canoe even to put on fishing or anything. Which is really sad for him. Yeah. So he's lost his trade post, but... He's going to have some shrine siege down here. He needs to start getting some shrines out. He might be popped. Um, one, two, three. Yeah, when this... Uh, well, this goes down. Goes down it's going to hurt now. a little bit. He needs to get wood quick. He's got uh, five Ashi, one Samurai, two Yumi, and two Explorers, which... Isn't quite enough to beat 12 Sepoy, but it's... Yeah, he's actually going to go and siege, it looks like, the next shrine. That's a that's a pretty solid play. That's going to help him out a lot. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of hunts on this map. So it's easy for Japan to just keep walking in a circle. Yeah. But it is unfortunate that the uh, Spanish consulate doesn't give him cheaper shrines. That'd be so ridiculous. <laughs> be so yeah, good. Yeah, and there's a Cherokee uh, shipment here or uh, settlement, so you could actually get about sixty wood shrines, which would be ridiculous. Mm. Oh, he's got now. He's not popped. He's got uh, another one built here. What was his uh, third and fourth shipments? Uh, for India. No, for Japan. He just sent in. Uh, third shipment, five Ashi. He hasn't said anything else yet. I think he's pop capped. Unless he's just gonna, he should really send out wood. 
but we'll see what he decides to do. So Sepoy going in for a little bit there, Nashier doing the job. This is a, I like how there's little cliffs here. Yeah, the really defensive map, very yeah. good for Japan. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a almost natural turtle. Yeah, I've I've the few times I played this map, I've really enjoyed playing Japan because you can just wall off the little tiny segments on both sides. Yeah, and there's just. You stick some Yumi behind that, and there's just nothing. <laughs> yeah. It gets through there. So it looks like Indy is going to take uh, trade post control. And he has map control right now. Gurkha, yeah. are also, Gurkha are also spawning in a little bit, too. Oh, he's trained for Gurkha. Okay. Not a bad decision. And uh, India is moving in. But I don't think he knows that... Uh, Boy beat Ashy quite easily. <clears throat> they have more uh, HP and attack than Ashy in uh, Colonial. Yeah. Um, yeah. Give you anxiety. Whatever fault he's saying is is on. Yeah. Max PR twenty five. Um, sorry, just going with the chat here. All right. Yumi out now. Yeah, they're like exactly. <laughs> they got like exactly the same. They're doing all infantry yeah, on Yumi this. Are, Yumi are a better unit than uh, than Gurkha are. One of the best. Oh, he's already got another another five out. I really like Gurkha though. I really they're like a him a lot. Unit for Colonial. Yeah, I like how they cost coin in terms of. Like the Yumi cost of wood, which is a little slower to gather, but we'll see what happens here. Well, there's a couple of Sepoy on low HP, but he picked off just one Gurkha there. Yeah, and he's also grabbing he's grabbing that second trade post already. So India, that's interesting. Taking full advantage of map control. I like that a lot because he can get his. Uh, he already sent out trade empires, so that's how he's grabbing that. Uh, but he'll be able to get that second wood trickle out, and then I'll help him a lot with his ability production. Yeah. Japan's got to get some more con map control. I really wish that he'd just plop his explorer on one of the islands. Or mm. there's, no, there's no hunts on him this time. I, I wish he would just have an explorer out here grabbing these. But actually, he's yeah. doing it right now. He's grabbing this one. Oh, he sent the daimyo in. I like it. Which uh, gives it a little extra attack on those Yumi, which is going to be really helpful. Yeah, best thing about the Daimyo, though, is definitely the shipment slash, like, train time, train training uh, point. Like, what he could do with that Daimyo is he could run it around the, mm -hmm. the side of the map. Yeah. And in the middle, uh, like, just walk it right under uh, Poxit's TC, drop 11 Sohi, and run away. Hmm. Oh my gosh, like, that'd be amazing. <laughs> it's so abusable. Or three samurai, or like, you know, but sure. the 11 so he's just so much siege, so like a halb. He could even raid doing that. Because you just have yeah, so many the... infantry. Using the uh, daimyo to. Oh, and he just trained yeah, five Nagis from there. Yeah, and uh, India got some uh, sours as well. Oh, so no. they're like oh, doing. <laughs> They're continuing to do like this the mirror effect. Yeah. The nice thing about the, the Naginatas is even though they're uh they're not as good as a Hassar, but they're very tanky. Hmm. Yeah. The Sours are very, very fragile. Yeah, so and here... do less damage. The Naginata is a much better unit. So some musks killed off there. Yeah. And so are there's some Seaplor killed as well, yeah. Faster. They're gone. He's trying to get away there. I think he sees that cab now. And he's yeah, gonna... and the daimyo doing a nice little uh, boost to all these units. Yeah, he's gonna looks like he's gonna retreat to the fort. That was a really good trade for Vivid. So Pox is actually going H three at the moment. Yeah. And he's and grabbing the Tower the... of Victory, so he's Tower gonna get that that attack boost. More importantly, it's going to give him a nice drop of uh, that wood. Yeah, eight hundred wood. I'm not sure what is going in age three. Probably, um, I'd imagine six hundred. I can't imagine eight hundred. I I think it's eight hundred, but man, 
India is just so overpowered, it's not even funny. <laughs> but if you go to Fortress, he doesn't really have any good military shipments. I mean, Team 5 Arumi? Why doesn't he just have the 7 Arumi? Yeah. He so... doesn't have any elephant shipments. He doesn't have 9 Zambarax. He doesn't have 8 Gurkha. Like, all the usual strong shipments that India has access to in Fortress. That's really unfortunate for him. That three Mahout Shivan is just one of my favorites. Yeah. I'm trying to see what what is this? Oh, that's what you're talking about. That, that card is so weird. Indian monks make units that are wait. Enemy units are, yeah, so that the units that are nearby are slower. That's very that's interesting. That's not a bad idea versus Ashi actually. Yeah, I'd even it out a little bit. I wonder what the effect is. I wonder. I believe it's 15% per monk. Ooh. Dang, 30%? That's a... Yeah, pretty that's a heavy, significant. Yeah, that's a heavy loss there. I think the idea is then you can really use your uh, monks to snare a batch of skirmishers and just let your mahouts just... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so true. We know that those really pass badly. Yeah, so here we go. Gurkha taking some shots here. <clears throat> He's trying to come around yeah, with Cav, but all the Sepoy are on that side. And but the Samurai are also tanking as well, which is helpful because it's saving the uh, HP on his uh, Ashigaru. Yeah, and Sepoy are all in melee. Daimyo is half health here. Daimyo is about to go down. Just oh, alive that's still. Really unfortunate. That's really unfortunate if he loses that. Barely alive and down. If I was Vivid, I would have pressed over on this side. I would have ignored the fort completely. Yeah, I don't know why he's going for the fort here. The forward base is literally, it just isn't really that important right now. I think he just wants to get rid of this uh, This army, yeah. That, that but Pox he doesn't has, have he any is... siege to take down this fort, so he's going to have to ignore it he either way. Got one samurai. <laughs> oh, this one Naginata is doing, oh, pulls it away. Yeah, so he's going to go back to that there main go. coin mine. Does he have any military left at all? No, Boxes? that, uh, let's see here. Or was that like a perfect no, trade? No, that is it. Vivid? Yeah, Vivid's good. Five Gurkha also, just spawned in. But that's not really what he needs right now. Yeah. If he had three Mahu, that would be really, really good for Yeah, that would right be perfect at the moment. Thousand. And he's got some Sours there. Looks like he's going to be able to kill these Nagis. Well, Sours don't do very well against other Cav, but the Agrifort is really helping a lot with that. Yeah, he sent in a Desert Terror as well as his next card. Okay, so that increases the multiplier against uh, Archers. Yeah, so that could be that could be beneficial if he gets enough of the Sours. Oh, and Tercios yeah. have hit the floor I like from it. the Consulate. That is... So, you do not see those getting played very often. Are those age four pikes? Is that what that is? Uh, it's a ten percent boosted age two pike. It's nothing oh, okay. particularly special. It just special, it just looks a little special. Look. They so just here, look cool. Yeah. So here he's got siege down the the uh, stable here. Yeah, he's got the Yumi on the Gurkha there, and then the pikes tearing down that stable. At, a ridiculous raid and the yumi are honestly just beating these sours yeah he needs to he needs to have a larger mass here lots of uh gurkha on the way though you got nine gurkha on the way oh that's gonna not be pretty for him he's trying uh trying to figure out how to kill these yumi off gurkha in there we go yeah. both batches just came out it's killing off these pikes now this uh, barracks is. It's probably oh, gonna go down, but. Yeah. Let's see what It'll costs probably here. go down, but. Uh, man, those pikes are just. And yeah, pikes are down. Now. So but he. There's no more stable, so there is that. Yeah, he got rid of all the siege though, so he's not gonna have to worry about siege, for a second really. He's got that four. Just this, four uh, can just soak up damage for him. Yeah, this Agrifort is actually doing a lot of work for him right now. Yeah, that's why I'm not I too sure. I would really like to see him not fight under that, but... Yeah. He's going to take down this like Sparrow as well. 
Yeah. And I'd then, like to see him drop be... at least a few more shrines. All he's got. He's also aging up at the moment as well. Count okay. with the golden pavilion. An excellent choice. That's going to give him a, uh, I believe, a small number of Yumi just as an age up bonus, and then it's going to provide a passive boost to the attack as well. Yeah, we got some good upgrades that you can grab later on too. Yeah, he'll probably ship Way of the Bow, I would expect, as his first card. Or maybe two Flaming Arrows. Yeah, he did send in uh, Onin War going into that attack, which helps the uh, Infantry Siege. So yeah. that did help him out a little bit there. Yeah, the Tercios had really high Siege, um, I noticed. I'd love to see a, uh Elephant grab here from India. Yeah, how much uh, coin is... Uh... Vivid sitting on. I don't have the UI, so it's at three fifty right now. Three fifty. So he's probably just gonna grab on himself an upgrade. I was kind of hoping to see uh, Yohimbo shipped. Oh yeah, he has a one of my eight hundred wood that he's sitting on right now, and uh, Poxa has a thousand wood. It looks like he's gonna grab water right now too. Yeah, he did have East India men in his deck. Did he ship that? Uh, no, he actually shipped a thousand food. Looks like he's having a food shortage, so he's going to transition to water instead of that going is, out for more hunts. If you look at the map, all the deer have wandered right in front of yeah. the base. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. So on there, that would just be perfect. Yeah. I still don't know why he's not grabbing, and maybe he's good doing that now. I don't know why he's not yeah, grabbing he's these further out. He really should be at 200 population with that shrine eco. Well, his explorers did die in that fight there. Hmm. And he did grab a couple of... Oh, uh, two flaming yeah, arrows. Yeah, it's a couple flaming arrows, yeah. I hope he sends Way of the Bow next, because that adds a significant amount of uh, HP to his Yumi. He actually shipped in the two flaming arrows. Yeah, he doesn't have a castle. And also that will allow his Yumi to outrange the Gurkha, which is going to be... Uh... Oh, and they're disciplined now. Yep, so he's gearing up for another attack, and Pox is just going full eco right now. Um, yeah. So we'll see what Those he's able to do with this. Sitting... Those Gurkhas are currently sitting at 20 ranged attack, and the Yumi are sitting at uh, 30. So that's going to be big, but... Uh... Oh, Vivid just ran out of berries. Yeah, he's got that last little bit there. He's Does got he have a cherry orchard in his deck? Uh... Oops. Yes, he does. He's going to have to send that, and that's going to be really, really bad for his shipment progression. Yeah. Unless he chooses to drop some rice patties, which is even worse. So, Pox just dropped a villager on this island here. Not too sure what he's... I think he's exploring it. Well, he grabbed those cows, which are now going to provide a nice little XP trickle for him. Yeah. Sometimes there's hunts on those islands, but to, there's just berries on them today. Yeah, could be a nice uh, area for uh, Vivid to go to last last resort if he needs to get more food. Yeah, I really, really wish he'd shrine these. Yeah. Like, really. Yeah. It's like 20 deer sitting there. Oh, and the, uh, the Japanese army is on the move. We have disciplined Ashigaru and disciplined Yumi. Yeah, the fort's at full health. And we got a lot of Gurkha combined with some Sours here, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, these Flaming Arrows are going to do a lot of work versus these Gurkha. Yeah, I think he just... And the Yumi are much better. Poxa just needs to dance around this fort. Yeah, the real trouble is going to be these Sours, because they're pretty trash, but they're very fast. Yep. So you misclick even once, and they can, they can really punish your mistake. Yeah, he's because actually he's got Yumi in the front good. right now. Does he see that? Dude, they are so they close. Oh, they're starting to pick off now. Oh, and that, that one tower is going to go down. Yeah, a couple are going to go down there. And he's actually going to tr try to grab this trade pose while the conflict's going on. Flaming arrows in a terrible position. One's oh, down. Really Gurkha are on a good it. side here. And Gurkha are going to fire away while he tries to deal with these towers. And they're running around just like you said. And the Ashi are in melee, which is actually really good because... Oh, no, he's pulling them back. I was going to say they could snare those... Um, yeah. Those Gurkha. Almost. They're but they're fast. Much faster than the Gurkha. Yeah, and these Sours are causing problems, and he's chasing them around like like madmen, flaming arrows down. 
Oh, and the Yumi will do fairly well against the Gurkha. That's going to be pretty close, though. He just hits and runs this back to the fort. Yeah, the fort's going to provide a lot of cover. Yeah, Vivid needed a little bit better of a setup there. I don't think he was Vivian expecting has those. a lot of idle villagers right now. Those guys come right in. He's going to have trouble remassing with all that. Yeah, he did just ship in the two uh, Orchard Rickshaw, yeah, as you were saying there, so up. they're going to pop back on that. He had run out of coin, so he needs to decide what he's going to do with the coin here, if he's going to go for maybe one the mainland, or can go for that one back on that island over there. Yeah. yeah. He also has the option of putting his shrines to coin, and oh, yeah. switching mostly to Yumi. Mm. Um, what's his H3 military shipments? Mm. He doesn't really have any anti-cavalry shipments available to him besides the Sohi again, and then, of course, Ronin and Yohimbo, but those are a 1,000 coin each, so. Yeah. So it looks like he's going to go over to the uh, other side. He's got that, yeah. that group sitting there. The Orchard Rickshaw. That's clever. So India... Yeah, if he puts that on the island, he'll be pretty safe, but the other canoe is actually sitting right there. So he sees, that, <laughs> he sees it. Really bad. That's funny. Can you imagine if that canoe stinks the one full of uh, villagers? <laughs> oh, that would be... Oh, boy. <laughs> well, his, on, his is on 30%. There we go. They got him off. Yeah, that would have been okay. something. So he sees it for sure right here. This is... Uh... Oh, if he loses that cherry orchard, that's huge. That's like 3,500 food, 5,000 yeah, food, whatever that, it is. Yeah, and that canoe is food. just taken down. Oh, a castle is going up. Okay. Oh, and five Mahouts are out. Where are we at? I like it. Yes. <laughs> I love it. That is, that is a okay, devastating so combo, I man. Yeah, remember how I said that Yumi are, are strong against Cav? Well, that's the exception. <laughs> I mean, if you have enough of them, you can micro it, just like you could if you had enough Abyss, you can micro these guys down, but he does not have enough at all. No, if you just put a wall right here, honestly, sure. yeah. like, the Mahus aren't going to get close. Yeah. Oh, and he's pushing, and he doesn't know what he's about to face. Oh, man. This could be bad. So Castle's going up he at the same time. Right at the edge How of the much water there. Does he have? Uh, who? Vivid. He's got 147. Okay, so he spent his export. I was going to say there is the option of eight pikes and a falconet from the Spanish consulate, which mm. would be really helpful for him right now. Yeah. Pox it sitting on 1400 export. Does he even have a consulate up? Nope. <laughs> he did. It looks like he, he's got two, uh, Caravel out know. here, yeah. He, he has, shipped uh, in, sorry, he shipped in a uh, rendering plant for the uh, fishing ships there, and he also sent in camel attack. Two more caravel popping out too, so it looks like we're going to see maybe a land invasion here, but here we go, the battle is going down. Mahouts are running around. Oh my oh, goodness, this is disgusting. Badly. Once they hit, it's bad. It is disgusting. The Ashi don't even have a chance, and they're getting stunned by the explorer. This is that bad is news scary. for Vivid. Yeah, I don't think Vivid's going to be able to hold this one. And that's really sad, because normally this is quite a Japan-favored match. And here we go. He's going to press on the counter. Now, what can Japan do in this situation? And he's <laughs> calling out. And well, si simultaneous, man, if, if uh, Poxy comes around with those, those warships and gets some siege off the water, that would be amazing for him right now. Like, hit this stable over here? Yeah, honestly, I mean, he could even house them. He could hit all those shrines, too. One Yumi. And <laughs> this is last Daimyo last resort. Is, uh... Oh, and five, five Ashi are on the, the field here. Oh, ten Ashi. More Ashi are popping out, yeah. And 14. He's... Okay, so he's got some... A couple some of Mahouts are deep. down. He's got one Mahout left, so... So far, dealt with pretty nicely. Yeah, the stun on those explorers is just so dirty. <laughs> yeah, it's something you really don't think about, honestly, until and you get into combat with them. Of your Ashigaru are stunned, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Mahouts are down, but there's still quite a few Gurkha. Yeah, he needs a, he's got some Sepoy coming in now. He need, definitely needs to upgrade them. 
and uh, figure out what he's going to do here. He's <laughs> Pox at sitting on almost 4,000 wood. <laughs> what is he doing? I don't know. Like, but, oh, he must be trying to gear up for some uh, rice patties because he's got no food left, no coin left, except this mine he's ignoring. Yeah, and he's got those villagers sitting there. Yeah, because that was his last free coin mine besides this one. So I don't know how much... Well, Ashigaru are now sitting at 36 range damage. I mean, that's almost as much as a Gurkha does against the Ashi. Yeah. So here he is. Here at 33. He's going to back out. He still has this trade post grab here. Definitely should grab Stagecoach and uh, just reap the benefits of having the trade monopoly right now. Yeah, if he'd put that on Stagecoach, that'd be a nice little boost to his eco. Though his eco's already miles ahead of Vivids right now with the water. Yeah. And he's going to go for another town center over on the side. Yeah, he wants that coin mine. Very overpowered that the. Uh, Asian villagers can build town centers. <laughs> no one ever talks nice about it. Turn. It is it's ridiculous because you don't need your explorer. Well, it makes sense that the native civs could do it. Yeah, it's like you know the native civs are from the New World, and like the game takes place in the New World, so it's sure. kind of like a nice little subtle civ bonus, like how they can see the uh, the trade posts already. Yeah, but the Asian civs being able to do it is just <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's so overpowered. <clears throat> So here we go. It looks like he's shifting a large amount of his eco over there. Doesn't even need to worry because Japan is just completely trapped on that peninsula. Yeah. So he's I think gathering a lot of coins. So I'm assuming that he's going to be training some flaming arrows. The score difference right now is just horrendous, though. <laughs> yeah. And if he were to flip. Uh inspiration on when those mahouts were out it would have been oh my much goodness better for him. oh yeah i honestly forget about I that ability a lot it. yeah i would not be surprised to see poxit go for what's his resources sitting at besides he's got four. almost two thousand food and coin and four thousand wood so yeah he's probably going for i think he's going too soon he was getting some uh, rice patty upgrades earlier and yeah, he's grabbing some more now, and he's actually getting the Sepoy upgrade. Uh, he, his next card was okay. Elephant Combat, so it looks like we're going to see him field more elephants here shortly. Kind of an interesting choice. And he's and training Japan more... Uh, is going on a migration. Oh boy. <laughs> he's training more uh, fishing ships as well. Yeah, I suppose that's why he's chopping all that wood. But yeah, Japan a needs that, that coin. Yeah. yeah, that's like, realistically, that's the last safe coin mine that he has right now. If uh, India keeps their yeah, army up there. Means... Yeah, because he just finished off this one here. And there's a castle going up in front of that coin mine. I like it. I'll help him see if what's coming in here. I'm really surprised he's not grabbing these hunts like you said earlier. Such an essential part of Japan's ego is their shrines. Especially late when they can't get 100 bills, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of surprised by that still. Maybe he's just scared because he doesn't have any map control. He just wants to keep yeah, it all in the, under his uh, control behind his base. Arrows now. Yeah, militaries right now we have uh, 12 Sepoy, 8 Gurkha, 5 Sours, and then Vivid has 8 Yumi, 22 Ashi, 4 Flaming Arrows, and 1 Daimyo. That's a better military than the, the India one. Much better. The, <clears throat> those units are also much stronger in Fortress Age. Like, Japan's scaling is just ridiculous sometimes. Yeah, so India right now building the, uh, forget the name of that, but, uh, that is the Carni Mata. Yeah. It's going to be nice for him to get those that. rice patties around there. And a really good resource boost right here going into age four with that age up. Yeah, it's really nice. And uh, he's building nice the consulate now finally, too. Finally. <laughs> he has 2,000 export to play with now. Oh, he can afford a brigade. That'd be... <laughs> if he, he grabs some artillery, that'd be awesome. He just, uh, yeah. sorry, go ahead. 
Did he send in good faith? Not yet. He sent in tame elephants next. Um, That's a really Vivid thing, actually <laughs> sent Diplomatic Intrigue as his last card. So we'll see what he's deciding to do with that uh, that council right now. And Caravel is coming around the side. Oh, that's going to hurt. What is he going to do with him? There. Dude, if he raids like that, yeah, if he raids that, that is going to be devastating. He's keeping them I all. he's going to sneak up on the side here, but these flaming arrows will do. Hmm. He will just obliterate those Caravels if they get close. Yeah, so we'll see what he decides to do here. Moving he alongside. I hope he goes for French Consulate and gets Grenadiers. Ooh. Which are actually really good against... Uh, and he's going yeah. for a push right now. So he's feeling comfortable. No, keep your flaming arrows back there. <laughs> flaming arrows, yeah, they're going to be pushed out at the wrong time. So let's see what happens here. As we said, he's got a stronger yeah, army composition. Good. But yeah, uh, right... Sending... Sorry, I was just going to say, right now, dude, Pox is just exploding with upgrades everywhere. Yeah. He still isn't allied with anyone yet. Let's see what he decides to do. We got so many elephant upgrades, Gurkha upgrades, eco upgrades, military upgrades on the navy upgrades, like <laughs> just constantly He's coming in. His elephants, but he doesn't have any. Yeah. Right? Oh, oh, oh siege, elephants. siege elephants. The counter to the flaming arrows. Oh no. Well, they counter each other, which is the well. Actually, no. The flaming arrows don't have the. Uh... The yeah. honored upgrades, so they don't counter artillery. Yeah. Because uh, flaming arrows don't become a culver. Oh, three mm -hmm. Hatamoto. I love it. <laughs> yeah, because uh, flaming arrows don't actually get the counter to other artillery until they get the honored upgrade in industrial age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Pox are right now siding with the Brits, and Vivid's going age four with the Shogunate. The Shogunate. Nice choice. Here we that go. It's going to give you about three shipments worth of XP. Engagement's going down. So he's and gonna pull those, out there. Uh, the siege elephants are just gonna tickle the infantry. Yeah. <laughs> I always love how powerful they sound, and then in reality they don't. <laughs> they don't do a thing. They barely, I think they actually take two hits to kill a streetlet. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, my, really, dude? I want to try that. Just like full siege elephant army against some streetlets. <laughs> the. Uh, the Yumis actually counter the Siege Elephants really well, which is, a lot of people don't realize that, but Siege Elephants are light cavalry, and mm. so Skirmishers counter them hard, and Yumi especially are very strong against goon types. Yeah, very interesting. He's so, really got to be careful here with these Flaming Arrows. They're just blocked in. He just, like, has a huge mash right now. Inspiration's oh, played. Inspiration's in, so the, the Siege Elephants, everything's 10% stronger and 10% faster. These Hatamoto are doing so much work. Oh, yeah, my goodness. I think the last one just got taken down. And yeah, but they did so much. The problem the is they don't counter the Siege Elephants. Yeah, the Daimyo's at full health still, so his Daimyo's still good. He lost all of, almost all of his Flaming Arrows. Yeah, there's the last one. But he just has gone Industrial. And yeah. uh, Poxa did ally with the British, so he did get that 10% uh, bonus going into that battle, too. I really, not for Vivid's sake, but I really hope that he pops out, like, three Falconet and, like, ten Hussar army or whatever it oh, is. Oh, man. That, <laughs> that would be just literally the counter to Yumi yeah. and Ashby. Yeah. That would be crazy. He's so got he, that Daimyo, though. He's going to explore over there. And we have some more quietness on the front. He's going to this uh, coin mine over here, which is... Oh, they're both going to the coin mine at the same time. Oh, baby. That is... Who's going to react first? Stuff I want to see. Oh, this is, this is going to be messy. Just peacefully gathering to get... Oh, and Vivid's pulling his bills away. Yeah, he has to, but, really. But the Gurkha are yeah. moving over, so Vivid pushes forward right now. Yeah, could catch him out of position. The uh, ships are making some movement here in the south as well. Yeah, I noticed uh, the ships are... One of them's at half health, so I assume the castle picked uh, a few shots off there. Yeah. 
I so really, really that wish that Vivid would make some cavalry right now because there's only five disciplined sepoy. Like we're talking H three sepoy. Yeah, a uh, oh, huge Ronin, Ronin spam here. Shipped. He just shipped them out of the daimyo and then ran away. And the sepoy, I mean, the Gurkha actually gonna slaughter them, unfortunately. Yeah, the problem with Ronin is that they don't actually counter the siege elephants. Because the siege elephants don't actually count as cavalry, they just count as light cavalry. Yeah. So the Ronin actually aren't a good choice right now, which is really sad. Because I love Ronin. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he should have gone around and sieged the, either his castle yeah. or something with them because they have such high siege. He's just and sieging this. Here we go. Stuff. Here is the cav going around for the raid. There Let's go! <laughs> he's just throwing away so many of these Yumi, though. And he's going to be able to kill basically all those villies. But is it going to be too late? I wish he'd put them in trample mode. Definitely could, especially with that Daimyo bonus. Yeah, the Daimyo does 51 hand attack as well, which is really <laughs> nice. Yeah, so all those are going to get slaughtered. I've, I've known uh, some players some Japan players actually use the uh, Tokugawa, the H4 Shogun, as a Vili Raider because he does 115 hand damage or something <laughs> ridiculous. You could just use all the uh, the Daimyos as a Raider, and Vivid has resigned. And that is game number one, going to Poxit. He, <laughs> Poxit's upset because he wanted to destroy his village. Man, dude, what a game. That was exciting. I don't think he was expecting that, though. Yeah, and even with that raid, dude, Poxit still had almost 3,000 coin, 25 villagers on coin, and he was just good. Look at the mili military unit pop. Yeah. It was the fort. If you watch that, uh, like, it jumps up and then goes down, and then jumps up again and then goes down again. The uh, the second drop there, that was just the fort and, like, five Gurkha. Yeah, is that crazy? Yeah, don't fight under the Agra fort, because... <laughs> Ever. Avoid it at it's all like costs. Three, three or four sepoys worth of damage just sitting there. Pretty awesome game, though. Yeah, really back and forth. Like, that beginning was like... I thought, uh, I thought Vivid had it. Yeah, I definitely like he was going to have it at first, but I think the, the gameplay, or the game-changing play was when... Uh, Poxit went to water. I think that kind of sealed it for him. Um, yeah, let's go. The villager Popcraft uh, tells an interesting story. I didn't check that one yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's game number one. Let's get to game number two. Really sad we didn't see uh, consulate units from India, but uh, not a big deal. Yeah. that I mean, honestly, the first probably few months that I played Asian Civ, you just forget that you have it. Yeah, I just... <laughs> the comments in your videos are always like, why don't you use your console? Yeah, I know. Yeah, when I first started playing China, I always forgot it existed, and now I glance over every time it's at 400. I'm like, oh, more musketeers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, takes some, it takes so much practice, though. Yeah, I think the other thing is, too, is like when you first start playing with them, um, you don't really, uh, you don't really know what each shipment, like, can br or each a uh, sieve can bring at the council. Yeah. Cause they're also different yeah, and unpredictable. Like, the French have grenadiers, which makes no sense because France can't even train grenadiers. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, why is there's, the there's a lot of them like that are Dutch like that. Is, yeah, the Dutch is the Stadhouder. Yeah, the, yeah. That's the mayors, the musketeers. so goofy. But then Spain is, like, pikemen. Like, and that one makes sense. Yeah. And then British has skirmishers. <laughs> I think they wanted to pick the church card units, but it just kind of ends up being a little odd. Yeah. 
All right. We'll see what Pox is going to play with. I already know it. Yeah. He says, China, showtime. (laughs) Both playing China. Double China. Here we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. China mirror. (laughs) I'm not going to ask, but is this a good play by Poxit? Um... No spoilers, but me and Vivid have been having a little bit of a, a Bengal-specific strategy for China. Yeah. And uh, I'll just say it's disgusting. <laughs> All right. Well, I can't wait. Look for that, but uh, China does it very well. This is a pretty cool-looking map, too. It's like a, uh advanced bayou. <laughs> it kind of looks like... It's basically Asian Bayou. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like. I always like the Bayou. I, a lot of people hate it, but I like it. It's a fun map. The only reason I hate it is the turkeys. Yeah, that's that could be understandable. If, if it didn't have turkeys, like if it was just deer and caribou, like I'd be down. But yeah. The... <laughs> so, okay, so you so like this map? Are seriously? Yeah. Seriously vivid favor. <laughs> That's unreal. He has four. <laughs> he has like six hunts and Pox has got one and two elephants. That's <laughs> unreal spawn. That's funny. This map's usually fairly fair. That's amazing. And that's funny because they're all like on his mainland. Are they? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. All right, Pox, it wins. And that is it. That is the end of the series. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, We'll see you next week. Just kidding. So who do you think is going to win this China-China matchup? Let me know in the comments. I've never seen Pox play China. I know Vivid's China, and he plays very YOLO style. Yeah. Uh, Me and him have had some fun 1v1s on this map specifically even. And uh, he's okay with base trades. He doesn't mind. You can have his whole town center destroyed, and he'll be back in your base a minute later. Like it's just that's his specialty. Yeah, that's that's true. I was playing a uh, a uh, free for all with him, wrecked yeah. his base, those, and then uh, he just came back a little bit later. Vivid loves those petards from the uh, British consulate. It's one of his signature moves. It's good stuff. All right, so we got 21 viewers right now. Not bad for a Sunday evening when Europe's all gone to bed. That's yeah, true. Had a consistent 20, 20 viewer count. All right. What am I trying to do this time? I've always want to try to mess around with this. I'm going to try to lower the uh, whatever you call it. Scroll. What's well, that? The scroll speed. Uh, casting style. Yeah. All right. Hunts are much more fair now. They both are bad. Are they? <laughs> Should we rehost again? Yeah. No, there's three mines for each player, but uh, Pox is at a slight disadvantage because uh, this one up here is much safer than this third one here. Yeah. We can re, but ask the players because three coin mines, I mean, if, you know. How often do you go through three coin mines in a 1v1? Unless you're Germany or Dutch. Yeah. Ask him real quick. Actually, Vivid has a really nice coin mine spawn. <laughs> Dude, I was playing on uh, Great Lakes earlier today. Literally, it, the coin mine spawned on my town center, like right next to it. I didn't even have to do anything to get my villagers inside. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so Vivid is already creeping, or already got a 50 wood treasure. Yes. That is really nice for China. Yeah, especially... Uh, honestly, whatever he's going to do, if he's going to do two village, even not, it's nice to have that. He's got 
both those elephants down already. So that's 2,000 food right there. That's really nice for him. He actually he killed the one, and he's not gathering from the one. <laughs> it's the king. Yeah, he shot it with all of his villagers just <laughs> so it wouldn't wander any further. Yeah, and yeah. Then, uh, but he should, he should have half these gathering on at least. Well, he probably has his TC waypointed to the second elephant. Nope, he doesn't. <laughs> no, that's all good. Uh, Poxa is currently looking for cows. But Vivid's already got a um, couple of them. Yeah, he's got three water buffalo so far. Yeah, he's going for 100 food in the middle of the map, too. So he's got some two pretty good treasures already. Yeah, that's going to be really good for his age up time. Like, really good. Poxit's uh, found 40 coin. Not going to help his age up, but it will be nice if he's going for either fortress or market upgrade. Yeah, got a 90 wood in the north. Oh, that's so we'll nice. see who grabs that one. That'll be a pretty strong one, too. Yeah, I love this divider in the middle here. Um, it's particularly funny if a, ha a hunt spawns, like right here. And if you have long-range archers like longbows or arrow knights, you can just park them right on the other side and shoot over. Yeah. So you think you're safe. It's, that's kind of the fun dynamic of this uh, this middle barrier that's funny. <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, shout out to... Oh, sorry. I was going to say, shout out to Forever and Beyond. It says it's 4 a.m. and your boy hasn't missed a single stream. More wood gathering. Man, dude, it is a good day for China. <laughs> that is He's awesome. He's eating one of his goats already for a faster age. Up. I like he it. He is going to be rushing. I will like it. Floor. 300 wood sent in. Yeah. Poxit's gathering wood right now, but he still hasn't dropped his second village. Oh, there it yeah, is. It's coming out right as you speak it into existence, my friend. Which means that he probably... Let's see his deck. I haven't even looked yet. Yeah, let's check it. Uh, yeah, he's probably just sending northern refugees. Pretty standard. Are you calling my China play standard? <laughs> uh, you're, it absolutely is so you better three minutes are standard um vivid does not have a single h4 card yolo man i like it <laughs> he also has boxer rebellion holy refuge this is a very interesting rack. deck he also has atonement that where's is that don't i don't even know what that is oh it lowers the population cost of outlaws. Oh. And it also allows you to train iron troops, which are, those are a solid. very, very powerful archer. Yeah, those He's are... He's aging up with a porcelain tower. Interesting. I don't know why you would do that going into age two. Well, it's like uh, if you could age with four villagers as any other civ, you would. I don't know. I, did, I just I just feel like the the food bonus with the uh, summer palace is strong enough cuz whatever resource you need you could just gather during transition. That's true, but <laughs> four villagers is pretty strong and they can't get raided. Yeah. 5000 hit point villagers. Interesting choice. We see the summer palace coming up standard from uh from Poxit over here. Yeah, so we got Village and Monastery coming out, so monastery. something advanced is coming here. Outlaws. I like it. There's going to be some serious outlaws hitting the floor right now. And that is a really nice island to pick to put it on. Yeah, I like that grab too. And he's got a forward village as a shipment point, yep. and he's securing a coin mine, Yep. which if he's going for something cheeky is perfect. Yeah, and uh, he has got that 65 coin treasure he could grab as well. Yeah, and he's scouting right now, and and Poxit's not even halfway aged, and Vivid's already got something in queue. Do you do you, can you tell what's in queue right now? Well, let's find out. Um, nothing's in queue yet. We got a villager, and uh, right now, okay, it's the uh, dude. I don't even know what that is. Pirate dude. <laughs> I don't is know it what the uh, thuggy or the oh uh, here we the go. One. So tell me. It's the Marathon, the Coit. Ah, uh, the Musketeer style one. Okay, so that's a Musk. 
Dude, we have uh, Jaegers and uh, Hackapels on this map. That is Ooh, that's awesome. A real nice combo. That is one skin for China, no anti cav. Awesome okay. stuff. And here we go. The Rattan shields are in. First shipment Rattan there. So Musketeer and Rattan. So Muscus. Essentially. <laughs> oh boy. He can't. Hackapels are an age three. Are are Jaegers yeah. also an age three? Yes. Okay, they're both age three. No, Hackapels would be devastating against China because. The, oh yeah. Uh, the Kiangs won't even take. Will only take one hit. So here we go, man. The Rattans are in. Rattans. The War Academy just went up. You've seen how strong these guys are. Yeah, they're pretty decent if you can keep them alive. And it oh, looks and like he is going to have them the back so right there. That is disgusting. Is oh, my goodness. One, two, three, four. Oh, man. At least five villagers. Oh, that village saved the day. Three, three villagers lost so far. Four down. And four. Four down. And he's got a lot of idle time, and he's nowhere near the town center, so he's not even taking any fire. That was for free. Yeah, that was not a great one play. Of lost any HP. Not too sure why he, those villagers are out on that wood so far. He could have easily had them on either of these tree sets here. I don't think he was expecting a raid. Yeah. From... Still kind of surprising, though. Oh, seven step, but step don't do well against Ratten. Yeah, let's see what happens here. He's got more villagers, and they're going to get away. Because in classic China style, the step riders have, well, they start with 150 HP, but he's got the British consulate, so they have 10 extra percent. All right, here but we the go. The Rattans have 185 and do the same hand damage, so pretty even fight between the two. What is he going to go for here? Going to see down the village, it looks like. It looks Stepper like he's on, try to raid. on the run. He's not even caring about his own village here. Um. He's currently beating a villager to death. With yeah, his, uh, yeah, I monk, did. I did see that earlier. Oh, these uh, these musketeer guys have a significant siege for China. Twenty. Yeah, he's doing a good job of getting that village down right now, and villagers are on the run. No, they're not. Vivid, watch your village. His village is being sieged down as well. Oh, thuggies have hit the ground. And he has hit max pop at these seventy. Are disgusting units. I've not really seen these guys in action. These guys here that are coming up? Yeah. They're like an Abyss gun. 45 attack. Are you kidding me? China has these, yeah. dude? <laughs> One and a half against uh, heavy infantry. And um, 45 attack. That's actually more than an Abyss gun. With That's twice the HP almost. Insane. Does does all Do all the Asian civs have this available? It's uh, map dependent. Okay. Oh, they're taking out Cav, and they're a skirmisher. That's disgusting. <laughs> and oh, they don't even have a negative. They don't do negative against uh, cavalry. These are crazy, man. And uh, he's got Minutemen right now defending his own base. Yeah. So far, the village count loss is eight on Poxic side and three on Vivid side. Both have lost Vivid's a village. Doing a very good job. Yeah, so he's just gotta get in some more siege and put the put the hammer on the head here. And well, these uh, these not skirmishers are thirty siege each as well. So. Yeah, lots of villas gonna get killed here though, and oh, that's Vivid's rough. not seeing it at all. So five villas down, six down, eight down. Wow. I've never seen Step do so much work. That was that was unreal. They each individually had their own villager that they were killing. <laughs> So here we go, man. Oh, He's trying wow. to take this down. If he could pop out his... Uh... Oh, man, dude. Yeah, rats are just going to slaughter that. Yeah, the duck squad doesn't really do anything against a uh, skirmisher and uh, rat and shield combo. Yeah, should have definitely shipped in pikes, I think. Um, But the pikes would have got obliterated, too. What he really needed is some cab himself, but he already shipped it, and it's halfway across the map. Yeah, it just got slaughtered. Yeah, <laughs> I I don't see uh, I don't see how he's coming back from this. Yeah, to be honest, the economic population right now is six to twenty-one. Ooh, <laughs> and we can see all six of those villagers right here on yep. wood trying to get unhoused. Yeah, 
and the Rattans are uh, just running around causing so much trouble. Those guys are so strong. Oh, Vivid's looking for more villagers over here, but he's not going to find yeah, any. Yeah, I like it. Oh, here comes the... Uh, here comes the uh, Chinese Yeah, that's what, that's what he needs. He needs that siege and he can finish this game off. And he's calling GG. Yeah. What a play. Amazing work there, man. 1-1. One, one. Fun stuff from China. That was that was devastating. Everything played in his favor on that with the treasures, with the, uh, yeah, was... the hunts. Or not the hunts, the herds, sorry. Yeah, you really couldn't ask for a better start as uh, China there. These these thugs did so much work. Yeah, that was that was amazing. <laughs> oh man! And seven step were actually just shipped as well. Kind of sad. We didn't get to see those. Yeah, that's good stuff, good man. Team. I like that build. That's fun stuff. All right, so 1-1 one, one going into this last match. I have not seen a game three yet. You have not seen a game three yet. Not in this tournament. Well, you're about to Everyone see one. Everyone I've cast or been in has been two, and then the ones I've watched, like Trajan's game or Trajan, oh, there, however you say it. There are some good uh, game threes that will be posted here soon. I can promise that. <clears throat> So here we go. We are on the Great Basin. Yeah. This will be interesting. I don't know what Vivid has up his sleeves for this one. Because that's his two sieves. <laughs> well, we're going to find out. Uh, probably India, Sioux, or Spain would be my guess. I'd love to see India. I love India. I would love to see India. Especially on this map. Got some great well, map control. Pretty, yeah, the wood is really far from the TC on this map. That is true. And the Agrifort doesn't control a whole lot because of the way these cliffs are. So it would be a good map for India, but not the best map for India. So we got India and Russia. So Vivid's just doing all three Asian sieves. I like it. Nice. <laughs> Calls him Wonder Boy. I love it. Here we go. Game number three in this best of three matchup on the Great Basin. Who is going to be able to... Uh, Get some good raids. I think that might be one of the most influential tiebreakers in this one is who can raid more efficiently. Yeah. Um, just because, like, these civs kind of play similarly in terms of uh, needing map control with a forward base and uh, having, like, a early pretty strong skirmish. forward base. Yeah. Um, Lots of musketeers, early skirmishers. Yeah. So we'll Lots see. Of wood as I, well. Yeah, I think the other thing too is a cheap cav is also. They both have pretty cheap cav H two, and they need H three to get their stronger cavalry. I would normally never say this, but the the tree spawn is horribly India favored. <laughs> but in this matchup, I think it's actually almost worth a re. Like, look at those trees on the India side. Yeah, Russia that's gets like nine trees. That's hilarious. That is just awful. <laughs> How many times are you going to see that? Never, but because it's in yeah, that's, this just is, un, that's just way that, too It's ridiculous. such a critical matchup. If, if Viva was not India, I don't think we would have noticed it. No, but because he's India, I, well, the mines are also horribly uh, India favored as well. So That's funny stuff. Ugh. Kind of interesting how I've never seen it that bad. No, um, that was weird. But how often do you pay attention to the tree spawn? Every time I play India. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> or 
Or Brits, honestly. I guess Brits, too. Oh, yeah. But I guess with Brits, you... I don't know. Brits, you Brits get... Wherever the trees are. Yeah, yeah. You can kind of wall off with your houses. All right, guys. Who do you think is going to win this matchup? India versus Russia. My gut says India. But I'm not India... sure how good Vivid is with India. No. Those Strelitz could cause problems if India doesn't have four Sours in their deck or doesn't drop a stable because they're just so cost effective. Yeah. This is actually a great tree spawn because they're both on the sides. Yeah. And the mines are a lot more fair. They're both one forward, one behind. Yeah. The Hunts... one's a little bit far, but... Yeah, hunts are okay. This one's a little bit closer for Russia compared to this one. Yeah. Vivid doesn't have a third coin mine, but I guess the third coin mine is like this one way over here for Russia. Sure. I think we're okay. okay. I think we're okay. I guess that's kind of equivalent to this one. Yeah, I think that is exactly what that is. I think we're okay. There should be one over here, but I think I think it's fine. India has that nice Hagger Fort. He can just stick right here anyway. So <laughs> uh-huh. It's funny because with these sieves, like, uh, India is just such a Trump card. Like, you have these sieves like Russia and the native sieves. Um, where you can get, you get this outpost or blockhouse, uh, war hut, and uh, they're so influential of gaining map control, and then they're just counted as useless against India because <laughs> the Trump or the the fort just trumps it so much. I know who thought that was okay. <laughs> like I'd love to just be in the room when that decision was made. Yeah, they can get a fort in Colonial. I think the thing is, the fo I'm fine with the fort, especially historically as a wonder. The Agara fort was pretty important. But in terms of HP, maybe they could have different HP per different age. Make it a lot more yeah, fair. I feel like it, if it actually had a benefit to aging with it in, like, Fortress as opposed to Colonial, like, I feel like it might get played differently. Sure. I mean, all like, you get is a 2 c boy, yeah. Yeah, because you know how you have to upgrade it to, like, be able to train idle villagers up here? Uh, Pox is just letting them stand there. Yeah. Uh, like, you know how you have to um, to upgrade it to be able to train, like, the, the camels, and then the third up, the second upgrade is to let you train elephants? I'm going to be honest. I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> oh, there's an upgrade in the fourth that if you upgrade it, you can train the, the camels, and then the third upgrade, you can train uh, elephants. That's the biggest game changer. Yeah. If those if those were actually pre upgraded, mm. by the way, um, Vivid is ten tenning. He doesn't even have a house. I like it. If those were pre upgraded when you aged with it to like industrial or whatever, that yeah. like then it would be I I think it would be better, but since it doesn't even do that. Yeah. There's I, no reason not to just plop it in the middle of the map and say, Nope, this is mine. I definitely agree. So we got thirty one viewers now. Ooh. Um and I don't know how I feel about the ten ten on this one. I like the quick age up, but Sepoy are a terrible decision—a terrible decision, in my opinion. Well, <clears throat> normally Russia is gonna let's see his deck here. Ship five Cossacks as their first shipment, and he does in fact have it in his deck. I don't know, man. I, if I was, can you get that uh, train or the thing where you can train him from the Fort Age two? The and he cavalry? sees no, he yeah, sees it right here. Okay, that's oh, that's, that's pretty good then. Um. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, dude, that would be ridiculous. Okay, that's that's pretty good. That's the H three thing. So is he gonna siege it out here? He should really oh, siege he's gonna it. Try to he's gonna try to kill the Billy. Or not? One damage a shot. <laughs> <laughs> so he knows where the fort's at. How is Russia gonna respond here? Not aging yet. His, really needs to get an age up. Pretty non-standard deck. For Russia? Yeah, he doesn't have four Cossacks. He He's got does five. does not have 600 wood or 600 coin. And he does not have either a Cavalry Archer or Strelit Combat shipment in H3. Yeah, I can see that for sure. I, I, he has Distributivism in here, which could be kind of helpful. 
Um, I think that was his first card, was it not? Oh, I haven't even checked yet. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I don't have the UI, but I'm going to just guess. Yeah. Oh, cheeky. Check this out. What's well, going down? He just stole uh, Vivid's <laughs> coin treasure. That's amazing. funny stuff. That's cheeky. Vivid could actually grab his XP treasure here. I think that's what he's going to do. Yeah, dude. Spawn. That's a great treasure, man. I don't know why he didn't grab that. I love XP treasures. They're really good for getting that first shipment in early, mm -hmm. but especially like for Spain. But I don't know how much it helps Russia because they just send that trickle card usually. And India is getting a trading post. Where I like is he it. Getting this wood from he has nine villagers. Uh, he sent in three hundred wood as his first card. Oh, okay. That that makes more sense. So here we go. All right. Colonial has been hit. He could honestly beat him with speed here. I feel like Vivid could have put it right here a little bit closer. Mm, yeah. I mean, he has this Navajo settlement behind him, which has uh, the Rifleman, which is a Skirmisher. Mm -hmm. And it also has a uh, 200 wood upgrade to boost your XP. Uh, yeah. A trickle from livestock, but he doesn't have any livestock on this map, so that's kind of worthless too. I don't like how it's on the side, though, honestly. Yeah. I think Fort, I Fort needs to go to center to get either. that middle map control and prevent anything going down the middle of the map. It would be really good, yeah. too, because he could monopolize his trade route a lot easier. But it is also yeah. it is where the hunts are, so I can kind of understand that a little bit. But uh, He is going to cut off Russia's hunting ability if he also puts something over here. Yeah, we'll see what he decides to do here. So he's going to move well, in got... with... Seven sepoy, and I assume he's shipping five as his first shipment. But he's got, already a block he's got six. Up. He's got six. Yeah, he's got six. The blockhouse oh, is he up. Oh, missed macro. Missed the fifth one. That's sad. <laughs> My heart. <laughs> a lot of uh, idle build time over here from Poxit at the moment. Yeah, I've and been watching the that. Cossack are out as you uh, predicted. predicted. It looks like he's gonna raid villagers with the explorer. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nope. that would be the most overpowered thing if the uh, explorer could stun villagers? Uh, I think it can. Can it really? That's hilarious. If it, if it can't, it can stomp villagers that are near it when it stomps uh, military units. That that city. makes more sense. Yeah. I don't know if it can just do it by itself though. Yeah. Yeah, I'm watching. So yeah, here we go. All eleven or twelve of uh, vivid villagers are in danger now. Yeah, and we also have Sours being played on the opposite side here, so... Just ships in the night over there. Oh, these villagers are all gone. All three. Right on them, like butter. That is yeah. disgusting here, and it looks like simultaneously, uh, Vivid's going to press. He has some Strelets, and he's got these Sours oh, here. Gonna be, uh, sours are going to go in. Two Flail Elephants. Yeah, two Flails. I didn't even know it was an H2 That's shipment. That's a lot of speed. I like that. That's, uh... He really needs to put his camels on these streetlets. Yeah. They're destroying you musks know, right now. And that, that blockhouse is going to go down. Well, yeah. They do, um... Minute are out. Each, but they also have a, um... Is he seriously meleeing with villies? Yeah, he's going in with the villagers, man. It's getting lit right now. Minutemen are destroying these sours very slowly, but they are. And villagers are getting that hit here. Siege elephant again. just got wrecked. You need to pull that that uh, flail elephant out and save it. That's 160 siege damage because it. Fires yeah, he he really, really needs that. Not sure why he's trying melee here. Huge unit loss though. Um, honestly, not as many villagers as you would expect. Only four lost right now from Poxit. Five now. I expect a little more than that. Why is he just letting this flail elephant die? I don't know. And he also, at the other end here, these cab just kind of got killed off from the town center. So a lot of aisle time on both sides. And <laughs> What a match. What is that? Yeah, what is going to go down now? I don't know. Though losing the blockhouse is probably worth more than losing... <laughs> He's tossing out two immediately. Two of them. <laughs> I love it. That, dude, yeah. Vivid's going to be furious when he comes back. <laughs> He's going to be so no mad. No kidding. Well, they aren't up yet. Uh, It'll take a full minute to build with a villager. He's got multiple villagers on there, though. That one's going to go up for oh, sure. The 
seconds. He's going to come in here. 30 seconds on Colin. So one's that up. Fine. He's going to get this other one up here. He should really Just focus one shot down that the ability. elephant with his, uh, with his block house. And he could use, he'd use these Minutemen here on the side, and it looks like that one's going to go down. Funny stuff, though. The reason he's focused on that elephant is if he hits those 1 HP Minutemen with the elephant, they'll all do drop. Oh, yeah. Things. Yeah, that's a good call. That's, it's, and he just and got it down. Yeah, there we Three go. Let's also better. played. So Poxa is alive here. The economic unit population is just about even 14 to 13 in Vivid's favor. Oh, I really wish Vivid had pulled back those flails after Yeah, the he needs those down. critically. And um, then he could have used these guys to heal them back up. Cause they oh, heal. yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. So they, he could just, uh, the gift that uh, keeps on sieging. Yeah, that's an H2 card. Yeah, so what is uh, Poxa going to do here? Another set of Streelets are out, so he has a decent amount of Streelets. And it looks like, I, I don't understand why he's just making Sepoy. You're, he knows he's going to make only Streelets, really. Maybe he's going to send that uh, Chakram's shipment. He's got a shipment Irish right now. Uh, does Vivid have 500 coin? No, he just said, he just called in a shipment. I didn't see if any coin got used. Mm. Are those guys? What are those guys exactly? Are they? A... They're halfway between a grenadier and an archer. They do a massive amount of splash damage. So that'd be amazing for streetlets. Yeah, and they have a fifty percent range resist as well, which is wow. really good against streetlets. Yeah. They do area damage, so they'll take out about six or seven uh, streetlets a shot when That's... there's uh, when they're bunched together. That's awesome stuff. Cossack just, got wrecked. Cossack just got wrecked. Cossack just got wrecked. Immediately wrecked. Well, what's funny is that the Agrifort shot the tree by the, the Cossack. He sent and in... The villagers had to go stop a different one. Yeah, yeah. He sent in a 600 coin. Okay. And he that sent it at the fort. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. He actually has a but villager there. The villager. Yeah, he's got the villager well, there. The villager. So... Waiting to see what's going to happen here. 700 wood was just sipped in from uh, Russia. So maybe another uh, blockhouse is going to go up. Maybe we can see a little bit of a turtle here. We got walls coming up, actually. So he's going to defend that side from uh, from raids. I like that. Well, considering he's making nothing but strelets, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, if he bunkers in and really starts walling off the majority of the area he's got, it could help him out a lot. I think he definitely needs to grab this a little bit later, that little area there. Yeah. But, also, uh, one thing to note is that if this game does go long, Poxit has two economic uh, late game cards besides the Eco Theory. Uh, the coin is yeah. the Royal Mint and the Refrigeration. Yeah. Which is going to be really significant. Oh, he needs to put those elephants on the Strelitz right now. He's not going to. He's going to run out. I think he just revived them. Kind of needs to get those elephants yeah. up to full health if he can. Yeah, but they do very well against the uh, the low HP Strelitz. And uh, Poxus just shipped 700 coin, so he might be aging. How much food does he have? He's got -ish? almost 700 right now. Okay. He's getting there. He's got 10 villies on food. Looking at his villager distribution, which he doesn't have a lot of villagers, to be honest. Yeah, he's actually ahead in economic score right now, 22 to 21. Hmm. Interesting. So, I suppose it's hard to keep up the uh, the villager production as Russia when you're pressured because that 270 food cost is. Yeah, low. yeah. He really he should definitely herd this in over here. Yeah, because um, this one here is uh, yeah is under control of Vivid, and the next hunt is here. So if <clears throat> actually Vivid's doing the right thing here, if he just stands his whole military right on top of these yeah. elkies. Yeah, that's what I would definitely be doing. I'm not sure how good his scouting is. I don't know how well he knows what is around, but definitely a good play, I think. So here we go again. Our blockhouse coming up. Surprised he's not doing it on the side a little bit more, but actually I'll just help him defend his town center. Yeah. It's a rough spot having the trade route go right past your TC. Yeah. So that is up. Okay. Our batch of villagers are out, and it looks like he's gonna hit the age up very soon. Here, he almost has Stop. enough food. Just ra just ran out of food. All right, dude. So these guys are in. Waiting so for India to push have, here. 
165 HP and an 18 ranged attack of 2 splash. That is... Oh, that is very nice against Strelit. Yeah, market's and going up, and it looks like it's going to get taken down here as soon as they come in. But you need to go for these Strelits. Here we go, the elephants are going in. He oh, really he really needs to dance around these outposts and have the outposts just uh, go right on those uh, those dudes. At least the Shockrooms have 50% range resist, so these blockhouses aren't going to do a whole lot. Took one down already. It's yeah. Really hit and running pretty really, well. He, he really needs to stop focusing this Explorer down. It's really not that important. Yeah. He's trying to keep hitting and running with these trees. Oh, these are, these are doing so much damage against these. And he's got back them. out. Oh, man, he should really keep him in the corner over there. He should corner him. Because once they're cornered and can't hit and yeah. run, then he's got the advantage. Just put a few uh, sepoy in melee, melee and just uh, snare them. Yeah, so it looks like he's got to seize the house a little bit. He's using those strelets pretty well, though, honestly. They're still alive. I'm very impressed with his, uh, with his strelet micro. Pulling out a little bit there. House is going to go down, and he has... How he hit the age up? What happened with the... Uh... Oh, we got 20 musketeers on the way from Russia. <laughs> oh, he said, screw the age awesome. 3 age up. And here they come. Oh, here's 10. And he's trying to get them all batched together here. So defense is priority, and this Indian army is going to get slaughtered if he micros this pretty well. Yeah, he's doing a good job. He really overcommitted by going behind the town center here. That was... I think, yeah, I think he should have pressed him over here and then siege that house and then come back around, but... I think he should have gone back over here and then over here where these villagers mm. are now gathering safely. Yeah, and that is going to be the that end of the Indian army here. A lot of monsters. So, pretty well played by Poxa there. I like the Shrelet Micro. And yeah, very good job. He lives Those to see another day. Much better if they uh, weren't getting pulled every every shot. That was very good. And he's still got five minute men alive. Yeah, he, he does. I like it. Oh, so is, is he going to go and press right hits, now? If the Ford hits those minute men, they're gone. Yeah, yeah. Minute men are backing out, actually. So he he does realize That's that. Smart. So here That's we go, really dude. Smart. What is he going to do with these guys? Able to get a few billies, maybe? No? Is he going to see John the oh. Fort? I don't think that's going to go well yeah, for him. Yeah, I don't think so either. He's Wood going for it, though. Floor in front of the fort, though, and that really sucks. If he sieges down this fort, I'm going to be thoroughly impressed. Strelitz has seven siege. <laughs> he is about a third of the way down. Villies are just chilling there. Really no, needs villagers. to pull these villagers Dude. out. They're no, walking right over. Away, really. What are these villies doing? They think the they can auto. protect the fort for the Indian Empire, but it's not going to be the case. Fort is half down. Villagers oh. are now getting it. Gurkha are out. So he needs to get these streetlets into... Gurkha is... It's oh, man. Nice. He's going to have to abuse the range or... Yeah. Because yeah, they outrange the uh, the streetlets and the musks, but he's not doing that. And what's he going to do? It looks like he's got to pull out here. Oh, really Fort's doing out. good he's damage now. Fort is now. over halfway down, and we got pause. Hero Vils from uh, Squamager in the chat. <laughs> About as far away from his TC. <clears throat> yeah, both their minds are far away. I don't think they realize that. I don't think he knows about this one. Yeah. I don't think he does either. There was 11, technically. Yeah, there was 11. Are you ready? <laughs> I want to check the fog of war here. He hasn't scouted it, has he? Someone has. Also a nice... Villagers nice are going to it right now. <laughs> He's going to find it real quick. 
I hope these Gurkha don't keep walking forward. Yeah, he needs to be careful there. Almost all of his strelets are almost And dead, he has found it. Which... And more musks from yeah. Russia. He could press here, that honestly. Is... I think he has enough uh, ruskets to do some damage now. <laughs> the old paper-thin musketeers of Russia. They do the job, do they not? Sometimes they don't, actually. Second trade post. Oh. I like it. They only do eight, 10 attack uh, in hand, 18 at range, as opposed to a usual musketeer at 23. What's the siege difference? Um, It's 16 instead of something like 20, 22. Here we go. They're he sees, he oh, sees the age up. The yeah, he just has the one. Nahu. Well, that's the age up one. Yeah. And if you look at his deck, it's very fortress oriented. Uh huh. So he could ship. He's um, gonna go in with the Mahout here. Ford is I almost really down. Hope he ships the first. If he ships a Rumi, it'll be uh, enough to take out all of these Ruskets. He's gonna get this Fort down, and the Mahout's dead. Are the Gurkha gonna do enough damage to kill off these Musks? I really wish he'd use this Fort to focus down the last few Strelets. Yeah, Fort's down. What's he gonna do? Is he gonna engage? He's gonna pull out. I like that. He's pulling out good. So the fort is taken care of. India needs a new, new training point. Um, I think he should make Russia come to him because Russia's all turtled up with all those blockhouses and walls, right? Yeah. So if India wants, what is this? He shipped advanced arsenal, didn't he? <laughs> oh, has he? Yeah, he just did. He's got three, uh, three X on his trellis. He's researched uh, the uh, counter infantry rifling. Yeah, that's hilarious. I was just telling him about that upgrade today on the uh, on the Discord. Oh, uh, that's awesome! Sorry, I like he's taking it. And here we oh. go. We got your yeah, baby. We got the Uriah Rumi in here. That's super oh, those exciting. Are gonna destroy those ruskets. The thing he's got to do though is he's got to be careful with these these walls. If he can, uh, if he puts more walls up, pox it, then he could take care of them. But uh. Yeah, but if if Poxit isn't expecting the room, yeah. by the way, the score difference is huge now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he's taking these. I don't think he knows about the walls yet. Yeah, he's going to find out real or quick. He, want, he might want this treasure. Oh, yeah, that's a great grab. It's an awesome grab. And Poxit has hit the age up. So Poxit going age okay. three. This is the perfect time for uh for vivid to push because yeah. those arumi will just tear apart his infantry only army yeah and with the gurkha in the back and he's got a castle now so a couple of siege elephants are a possibility he definitely needs a siege doesn't he because what pox yeah, will probably do is just back around behind these blockhouses again and so he needs yeah, to get some siege to take, to take that those down. out from range and as india you don't have a lot of options yeah you have one falconet and eight musketeers at the uh, consulate, and you have two siege elephant shipments, and that's that's about it. I think. Oh, there's the horse artillery and industrial age from the French consulate as well. Hmm. Exciting stuff, though. I'm assuming he's going to ship in the seventeen, oh, 17 street. Let's <clears throat> excuse me, going into age three here. As they uh, come in from the age up, but we'll see what he what he went with here. Um, he yeah, he did do, he did the adventurer. So I'm gonna guess two two falconet. Oh no, sorry, I'm saying with the age up. Oh, he went out through the age up with the strelets instead of the fast age. Yeah. Interesting. So he's got a decent amount of musks now, who also have infantry uh, firearm increase here with the paper cartridge. Oh, he went with paper cartridge. Nice. That's an expensive upgrade. That's like yeah, 600 reasons. He is investing greatly into these boys. But now they almost match a regular musketeer, but they yeah. cost 20% less. So that's yeah. not... <clears throat> so I guess once he's trained about 60 of them, it pays for itself. Mm -hmm. And if he vets those, it'll be nice. So he's got a shipment to use. Streetlets are here. Um, um, Vivid has just shipped a thousand wood. Yeah. 
<laughs> he is just training more Gurkha, which are now disciplined and has the man Sabdar. Ooh, that's a fun which one. Which gives a 10% aura boost to the Gurkha around him. And he also has double the hit points, which is disgusting. <laughs> fun 276 stuff. HP skirmisher. <laughs> what is that? I like it. It so is here, so broken. So here we go, man. What is Poxa going to do to counter this? Yeah, does he see that? Is he going to move over there? He's got a second TP going up, or TC going up. I like it. The, uh, thousand wood. That's great, and there's a gold mine sitting there. It's 5, a 5,000 5, 5, coin mine, yeah. Good grab That's there. That's really nice, because Pox sits out of coin. He <clears> just <throat> ate through his second, or through his first mine. Yeah. He could actually, he's, I think he's going to use this one behind the wall. He also has this one over here he's kind of messing with, but... That's a dangerous one. Yeah. Also so two fouts are in. Vivid has not put stagecoach on his uh, trading post, which is really unfortunate. This surprised like we haven't go time for Russia. Yeah, we, I'm surprised we haven't seen that in the stream yet. But uh. No, just uh, interjection. So here we go, man. Falx, Musketeers upgraded. They're about to go vet mode. Streetlets in front. How can he make use of this army? What is he gonna do? He's really good. He's got to put veterancy on those strelets. And they are they're being vetted right now. Okay, excellent. They look so cool when they're veteran. Yeah. <laughs> I like I love it. The, skin from the Russian unit. Yeah. So 1000 coin just came in that. with uh with Russia here. What's he got in mind for that? Not too sure. Does he have a merc shipment? No, he doesn't even have a merc shipment. I don't know what he's going to do with that. Could definitely pump out a bunch of musketeers if he gets his housing. Yeah, he's just got our house up. And this, uh, this monk's gonna spy the mighty Russian army here. Yeah. So give him some nice warning, but uh, I don't think infantry bless think breastplate that... upgrades coming in now. He's getting all these advanced arsenal that. upgrades. But infantry breastplate doesn't affect any of the units that are on the field right now. Does it not affect streetlets? No, it just affects archers. That's funny stuff. I feel bad. So like longbows and uh feels bad, man. Longbows and like sleepy and what <laughs> yeah. It's not expensive, but it's still four hundred resources he could have as uh what is that, like a thousand streetlets or something? <laughs> Basically. What's the actual cost of one of these things? Sixty resources. Oh, he just sent in halberdiers, man. He's bringing in the siege. He's shipping helps, or he's he just br he helps. just brought in two two batches. Eight. Okay, so two batches. Oh, well, veteran helps. <laughs> Russian halberdiers are so weak. Yeah. So we'll see what he decides to do with this. He could. Oh man, we got a lot of sours over there. India's starting to mass up their army. I see. Oh, they're disciplined too, which is really nice. And four blockhouse coming out over here now. Okay, so he's setting up for uh, a cheeky push over here on the right, which is great for Vivid because half his ego is over here now. Yeah, crazy he's stuff. He's got two hunts, a uh, gold mine, still at 3,800 coin. Yeah, this actually might be a really okay for Vivid. And if he uh, trained the Mansabdar or Sour, they'd get another 10% as well, which would be great against the... Uh... Yep. He spotted it now. And he's advancing. They're rolling the out. Elephant Gandhi. Discipline Sours, Urumi, Discipline Sepoy, and Gurkha. That All is a nasty mixture. Ready to respond here. How is this going to work out here? The uh, fun fact, the Halberdiers actually get the infantry breastplate upgrade. <laughs> yes, yes, they actually do. <laughs> just figured that out. I, I just... I mean, I know that it affects hand infantry. I just, you never see hand infantry on there. Yeah. So here we go, man. Yurami are right here, dude. He's got to make use of these cannons. Halves oh, are no, dealing with them on the side. Streetlets are getting so in the melee. Oh, my goodness. Sours are getting... Oh, man, dude. Are they going to get there? They're going to get there. Yurami are coming they're in, slaughtering one cannon. Arumi are actually really bad against artillery because they can't do melee damage. There's... Yeah, so they're struggling, they man. Musketeers have plowed through that sour army. Yurami are almost all gone already. And this is like a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle. 
the Arumi are only really good in numbers. One of them isn't super strong because they do that area damage. Yeah. And once again, these guys just have a habit of fighting underneath uh, block houses with support. Yeah. Musketeers popping oh, out here. Oh, these Musketeers just got wasted. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like he's going to take advantage of that situation there. Is he hitting the age up yet? Um, no, Vivid has not hit the age up yet. He is almost no, out of food, though. He does not have an ally at his consulate. I really wish he'd had the 10% oh, of Britain Oh, man. There. Yeah, Brit would be a great... That Great grab. And it looks like he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna siege it down there. So there's a couple of villagers in that uh, blockhouse if he uh, bothers to siege it down. Yeah, it looks like. I mean, he only there's has Gurkha. Nah. He also lost his uh, man Sabdar. Yeah. Gurkha in that fight somehow. Probably the Falconet. So pretty good battle so far. Really good matchup between these two. Oh, two siege elephants. Yes, there they are, man. That's what he needs. There we go. Does it's about time. Russia not have a stable yet. Now, yeah, he's going infantry only so far. Oh, that's... Uh, <clears throat> that's unfortunate because uh, Russia has some really good cavalry. Yeah. All three of them actually are just really solid units. Oh, he's going to get these three villagers really uh, for free over here. He finds them. Yeah, there are four of them, actually. They're running for their lives. Oh, They're gone. <laughs> oh, I don't think Vivid saw it. He's not chasing. Yeah, I don't think he did see it. They're going to escape. To fight for the Russian Empire. Yeah, so what is Russia going to do food-wise, though? They're running out of food. Two Falks in here. Have to drop, drop a mill. Four He's Falks? Four what Falks is going on? <laughs> Where's his foundry? Oh, he has... A uh, blockhouse cannon in his deck. Is that a thing? Yeah, you can train cannons in the blockhouses, Russia. That's amazing. <laughs> that is. Need a foundry. That's amazing. He just spawned four falks. So, dude, if he presses center here, he could cause some damage. Well, yeah, but two siege elephants versus four falks. Yeah, they're they're just out of position right now. And Strelitz just don't have the range to to deal with the siege elephants the way most skirmishers do. Yeah, yeah. The good news for Russia here is that if he pushes now, the siege elephants are really out of position. Mm -hmm. The bad news for Russia is is that uh, India's units are much better, and he just had to build a mill. Well, Vivid is booming from two town centers. Yeah, and he just he shipped in refrigeration too. Russia did? Yeah. Okay. So he's his playing, mill he's, is close. Playing his cards close, pretty well close. here. Yeah, he's done really, really well. Russia's a hard sieve to play with. And now another town center going up on the opposite side here. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, if, uh, they're just waiting. Finds that. Vivid's just uh, my, or covering all the mines, because as soon as Russia has to build a a plantation. Because, mm. I mean, four falconets, that's a whole coin mine right there. Yeah, what he really needs to do is save his coin, age up, send in the uh, factories, and then just kind of rely yeah, on that for a little bit. That's his best bet. Because India doesn't have factories. It's one of their biggest weaknesses. Late game is they just don't have that. Because, like, Japan has the shrines, right? Yeah. And... So Sorry, he just yeah. he just uh, sent a Strela in there and figured out that he had siege elephants. So yeah, he might sees be that. A little fearful here. He's grabbing his trade post now too, so maybe he is trying to aim for those factories. Yeah, he's got two of them now. He's so waiting for India to push anytime here. Here it looks like he's going to go in a little bit. Oh, sorry. Oh, these four falconets. Oh are my gosh, fire. arsonists are here as well. <laughs> Arsonist, that's. Uh... The mercenary grenadier. Falks are going to slaughter these sepoy. Gurk but or the uh, sour trying to go around there. Around before the flank. He needs to wait the for the, he needs to wait for these siege elephants. Yeah. I don't no, dude. Really these. Them. Oh my gosh, these Gurk are going to get slaughtered. They're in range. Back up. Oh Get no. Away. And musketeers here are going to go in melee against these. Oh no, they're not. Okay, I thought they were about to. Wow. Oh, the grenade. 
Oh man, those. Uh, what a matchup we have here. Siege good. elephants are close to going down. He could take out these Falks here. One's down. He really... One more to go. Siege elephants are getting yeah, meleeed. The, the siege elephants fortunately don't take bonus damage from the uh, the musk uh, musk units. But yeah. They you know they're not gonna win that fight. Yeah. So here we go. He's he's got that cannon is gonna go back and be protected here. And Russia's yeah. army is suffering. Those he needs food. So much. Yeah, it was a great he, play. If he didn't have those, he uh, I think Russia would definitely came on top on that one. But that definitely did some damage to those musks. If his siege elephants were in position, though, that yeah. would have been a big help because he could have had at least two of those falconets down twice as fast. Yeah. So you're well, out, of out of coin. Now. So what? He just what out, is he gonna do? Oh, he's walking them forward towards Vivid. Not sure if Vivid's gonna be able to see it quite yet, but he will very soon. Oh, this is gonna be a messy match. I can already tell. <laughs> awesome Vivid game, though. Doesn't have, yeah, Vivid doesn't have a single late game card, not one. Yeah. Like eco -wise. Yeah, we talked about this earlier, didn't we? So. Yeah, he actually uh, copy pasted my my uh, elephant whale elephant rush deck, which I'm quite flattered by. But. So if, honestly, though, if Russia can survive this. If they can survive the hunts being taken care of and somehow these coin yeah. mines, then he is favored because he's going to have the he, late game eco set up. And he does have a thousand wood on the floor, so he can start building up either one plantation or two mills off of that. Oh, he's dropping a mill. Okay, yeah. so he's going to build a mill and something else out of that. Lots of units from India, though. That is That is looking devastating. Three Falcons. He's still making it. I, I love it, dude. I love it. What a card, dude. That's such a fun card. I'm learning so much about cards right now. And he just has so many villagers on coin. He's just got to be making as many Falks as he can at the moment. <laughs> He's already halfway, almost a quarter of the way chewed through that mine. Yeah. Oh. Does, uh, does he have um, the second tier market upgrade on his coin for the bill? Um. No, he um, just has placer mines. No, just placer mines. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say that might have actually paid off by now, but uh, one of these two is gonna spot the other here. Yeah, very shortly. I cannot wait to see who it is. <laughs> oh, Vivid has shipped surgeons. Interesting. From the uh, British consulate. I don't think which can build. I don't think that's worth it at all because your explorer can make your explorer can heal your guys for you. The explorers only heal at five a second. The surgeon does about twenty. It's a significant difference. Yeah, but it's not like he needs the guys healed up ASAP. Unless the only thing is, if he fields a bunch of elephants, he can continuously bring them in and out. He also uh, can't reship the arsonists as well, so that's big. Because that's a lot of siege. Do you see the stats on them? I have not actually. Wow! Holy feet. cow! Yeah, this is a grenadier. Yeah, they're they're pretty close to age British Grenadier. They're very strong, so lower HP. Which, uh, the uh, so or, uh, Musketeer uh, bayonet socket upgrade just came in, so okay, better melee there for his musks. Uh, and now he's he also researching that. flintlock. Okay, so we'll get some HP. There. Still pretty flimsy. Yeah, man, he's he's going all out in these infantry. He's got five falconets though, man. He's really getting these falcs out. I'm impressed. Well, Fal falconet uh, musketeer is probably a combination against Indy. Yeah, because in because is more can't do or a really large goon mass, which India does we do. Yeah, and you're cutting out just a little bit. Oh, yeah. The, the in well against musketeer because they don't really have a good counter to it. Yeah, blockhouse going up over here. I mean, they uh, is he gonna be able to see those vills? No. What is gonna go down? He'll, he'll have line of sight. Pox it. No. Oh, he's building a. That's gonna hurt. 
Yeah, plantation he going also up. Does not have a, which is unfortunate. I'm surprised the eco scores are as close as they are. I would think India would be miles ahead by now. Here we go. He sees that villagers have been sent Those backwards. Much higher. This is going to be. There's musketeers on the move towards. Uh, yeah, they're moving the over. I like it. What what Vivid really needs to do right now, this second, is throw 20 sours on top of these strelets and cannon. Oh, if he's that would be GG at an instant. He sees it, though. He's moving over with his uh, Gurkha. They're both moving over. Wow, both. Messy. Oh, the whole army's moving over. All the villagers are moving opposite side. But this is going to be good to pick off those musketeers. And then he trail it, and without the yeah, I mean There's... the advanced arsenal very nice, but I mean probably why his eco lower is because a lot of his score been about hundred resources worth of advanced arsenal. Yeah, you're still you're still uh, cutting out just a little bit. It's not terrible, terrible, but you are a little bit. Surprise, uh, Vivid's not going to age four yet. And uh, Pox, it looks like he's gearing up to age up here a little bit. Um, Vivid and our uh, Gurkha again. And, and he's got just shipped three boots, which if those sound... Yeah, in the middle those of the would map, be ridiculous. Be... How fast would those gelets go down, do you think? Five seconds. He's gearing up, man. The whole ar I love how both armies are just forming over here. They like. There is. No Love to see Vivid drop a wall, right? Yeah, here we go. He's moving in. He's moving in with Sepoy. No, don't do that, Vivid. What? Here we go. Going right in with the three. Let's cannons are all there. And the sours. Oh my sour. A lot of sours, yep. He's gotta really make use of these musketeers here. Falks are in open position. Here come the sours. This is gonna be it for the Falconets. Sours are in there. We got some queer sears in there as well. Oh my goodness. That is disgusting play from India there. That is one of my for me. The grenade year queer is <laughs> what a match here, man. We got villagers trapped in the corner over here. My poor cannons. Oh my goodness. What a play from Vivid. The grenadiers and arson back doing all that splash damage. Uh, but Poxit has a ton of resources. He could pop out a large amount of troops right now. But what's he going to He's got 40 musketeers on the way, and he has enough to pop out probably 100 streetlets. <laughs> so if he if he baits him in here... The Minutemen are finally dying. Yeah. <laughs> if he baits him in here, man, he could maybe get something done. But he needs to really get him invested in taking down that town center. In minutes, and the last Minuteman just... <laughs> all right, needs to like run the villagers. Villagers are all going inside. And just waiting for these troops to come out. Here. Grenadiers are the... here too, dude. Holy cow. Oh, these gonna disappear. Yeah, dude, look at those Mahouts going to action. Grenadiers combined with some arsonists behind them. Large musketeer army here. He's trying to go in. The Gurkhas are gonna absolutely slaughter these musketeers though. One by one, they're being what taken down in seconds. The melee isn't a bad idea. Give him a slight advantage because all the yeah, he was trying, man. He couldn't quite get there. 30 streetlets on the way, but it's going to be too late. This is going to be it for Poxit. Oh, those grenadiers just... Slaughtering the musketeers. And the, the ones from the consulate are... Because they do shadow tech. Yeah. They upgrade for free. You know, you, well, you don't want to make... Upgrade them, and they are quite expensive. But why not? Great, you... It. 
What a game, man. What a series. Awesome series. Man, that was amazing. That was some good stuff. Amazing. I was hoping that Poxa could oh, even it out a little oh bit. But uh I think he played he played extremely well. Russian turtle is not an easy thing to do. No. Because there's no one. real boom potential. <laughs> yeah, one siege elephant. Good here, job. Here come the Vils. Go... He's trying to run away. He's engaging the with the Vils. Sours are coming in. Oh, and oh, Jat Lancers are also played, dude. Holy cow, that is you never see those. I love absolutely the slaughterhouse in the game. Disgusting. On those. The forty percent rangers are disgusting. They just ignore. And he's trying to stay alive, man. Russia is trying to stay alive. And here come all the cab in the oh world. Oh, my goodness. Those Jat Lancers are going to... This is going to be an XP XP slaughterhouse here. Musketeers are going into melee. They one-shot a... You know, uh, probably... This is going to be disgusting here. Oh, this is... Just... Musketeers okay, are down. Is... Streelets are trying... They'll make their last stand, and here they go. <laughs> They're about to get engaged heavy here with these guys. Yeah, and, musketeers don't help. There's, you need cav archers. We answer Russia has. has. Oh, look at that. <laughs> and that is it. He calls GG. What a play. What a game, man. Atlancers. Wow. That was awesome stuff. Yes. That blockhouse cannon card too. <laughs> Dude, that was that was one of those clutch plays, man. Uh, the win, but man, incredible how he pulled that off. <laughs> yeah, that was a great match. Great him. Or when did that happen? Sorry, go ahead. What'd you say? When did that happen? Oh, I, I can't hear you. You're cutting out a little bit. Vivid went in dust. Oh, oh, yeah. I don't... I, I did not pay attention to that at all. I guess that's how he got the Lancers, because that is... Uh, shit. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, villager total uh, is worth a worth a look. Yeah, I was checking that too. You can see the the uh, trade post dif or, I mean, the town center difference really helping out there. Yeah, I think that was honestly the play that won him the game because it was pretty close back and forth. Yeah, this one at the bottom, on the bottom left. Really yeah. awesome match, though. Kept his surgeon alive, but he never built a field hospital with it. Yeah. So that is oh, going to be it with this 